well. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, the organizers, for the opportunity to show some of my results here in this wonderful place. Well, I am Michael Mota. I am from the São Carlos, Federal University of São Carlos. I am a part of uh, Wilson Ortiz Group there. Um, the title of my talk is the Magnetic Image of AC Susceptibility in Superconducting Thin Films. Well, the main question that I would like to, to understand from this data is why the, the I would like to uh, understand why the, the, the AC susceptibility curves, curves in general are uh, reversible. So that's what I will treat in this presentation. Uh, first of all, I will, uh, I will treat this also when the flux avalanche appears in the sample. Uh, so I will treat the flux avalanches firstly in plain in the in film films decorated with an array of antidotes, and I'll talk about the uh, signature of the flux avalanches in AC susceptibility curves. I will give you some uh, details of the sample and the methods. I'll show some data of the uh, uh, image the AC susceptibility during the smooth penetration and also abrupt penetration during the flux avalanches. And I will show what happens with the flux avalanche when the, the, the temperature is high. Uh, and, uh, well, if uh, the main question is a, it's a, uh, a melting will take place or what will happen. So this is what I will answer in this uh, uh, presentation and also my conclusions. Well, flux avalanches are abrupt penetration of uh, magnetic flux in a specific range of temperature and also uh, the applied field. So one of the signatures of the flux avalanche in a magnetization versus DC curve is, the, is this noisy behavior, these flux jumps. And uh, well, it's possible to see here that it starts in a lower uh, field and uh, um, it starts in a field here and then stops in a field here for one temperature, for example, 3.5, it starts here and then stops here. And uh, from this data, it's possible to build a, um, edit in the ADT diagram the region where the avalanche take place, as we can see here. And uh, the threshold temperature where the avalanche stops is uh, given by T star. In this sample, it's 3.9, for example. Well, another signature of the flux avalanche is in uh, MOI uh, imaging technique are these uh, jumps here and uh, it's uh, in a dendritic shape and uh, they avoid to, to, to each other in this uh, during this triggering of this flux avalanches well and uh, it's explained based on the, the thermomagnetic model this the thermomagnetic model is related to the uh, magnet diffusion and uh, thermal diffusion. When the magnetic diffusion is faster than the magnetic diffusion, when some uh, there is some vortex movement, it will increase locally the critical the, the temperature and uh, it will decrease the critical will decrease the uh, critical current and also the pinning force. Then more flux is uh, enter the sample and uh, the electric field is generated, and then more heat is generated, and so on, making this positive feedback and triggering the flux avalanche. And the, this is a quasi adiabatic process. Well, however, the flux avalanche for are, de are detrimental for the applications. One important thing is when the, the flux avalanche is triggered, uh, the temperature can be locally higher than the critical temperature. Well, after it's triggered, uh, and the sample cools down again, it's possible to see that the flux avalanches uh, present a, a, an, an internal structure, and it's possible to see the individual parts of this region. They are not, uh, the density is known uniform along the, the, the flux avalanche. Another feature important for the flux avalanche that they, as I told before, they avoid each other. So one is triggered here, and when the field is increased, another avalanches appear and, and this one becomes frozen. And um, when it's triggered, uh, on a new avalanche uh, actually avoid crossing the existing ones as we possible see here. Well, uh, when antidotes are uh, created in, in superconducting films, the main 
consequences they increase the temperature. However, for the flux avalanches, uh, it guides the flux avalanches along the the the, the lattice, as firstly observed by Velasco Vlasov and uh, some years after by Mengini. It's possible to see in these two thin films uh, some guidance of this, the flux avalanches. And uh, well, we study this and uh, we understand this based on the critical current uh, effect. And it's possible to see here if this sample is a uh, half of the sample is decorated with square in uh, square antidotes in a square array, and the other half is uh, circular antidotes in a square array, and it's possible to see here that the flux avalanches try to follow to the ramification, I mean the branch uh, grows at 45 degrees here due to this uh, current cloud effect, and then it crosses the, the center of the sample here, this line I mean, uh, it will have uh, branches at 90, uh, 90 degrees. So it's possible to see that the flux of interact strongly with the antidotes array and also the, sh the, the shape of the antidotes is important and they are highly influenced by the current crowd e effects. Well, uh, the, the signature of the flux avalanches in AC susceptibility versus temperature curves, uh, we can see here for low AC fields uh, values, it's possible to see the uh, usual transition of the thin film. However, when the, 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 AC, uh, the AC field amplitude is increased here, it's possible to see a deep and a paramagnetic reentrance below a certain temperature is identified as T of deep. And uh, here it starts, it's an evidence that starts the flux avalanches. The same uh, signature is observed in chi versus DC field curves. Well, uh, in order to explain this behavior, we uh, measure in a niobium film, film decorated with antidotes. The same signature also occurs for the plain film. I forgot to tell you this. And uh, well, but for a niobium film, it also, uh, it also occurs for a certain uh, 2.5 Ørsted here of uh, amplitude of the AC field. And we could identify that at 3K, for example, we have the flux avalanches and cleaning the magnetic history at, at 5K, there is no flux avalanches anymore. And at 6.5, only the uh, smooth penetration takes place in the sample. Well, so this reentrance is due to the flux avalanches. We have done these measurements by emulating the AC field using the DC field, and here show some images taken at this point A, C, and E, and uh, it's possible to see that here in, e, in, a, in the maximum field of the a, of the simulated AC cycle, it's possible to see the flux avalanches, and then decreasing the field. These tracks are some of the tracks are used, new ones are triggered, and then increase the temperature again new, some others are also used. However, new flux avalanches are triggered, so it's possible to see that there is a partial reuse of these channels cr created dur during the AC cycle. Well, as I told you the f uh, during the, the in the first slide, uh, I would like to understand why uh, the AC susceptibility shows this deep and why uh, this dip is also uh, uh, occurs for uh, measurements done increasing the temperature and also decreasing the temperature. And uh, why are the AC susceptibility versus temperature curves independent of the magnetic history? That's what I would like to, to answer uh, with these measurements. Well, I measured two samples. I one uh, plain film of molybdenum silicon and another film uh, molybdenum germanium film decorated with a square array of square antidotes. Possible to see the nine, uh, the 45 degree branches here, and uh, the critical temperature 7.2, and the, this is the the maximum temperature where the avalanche take place. Um, but uh, I will show. <coughs> Basically, the results that I uh, obtained for the molybdenum silicon films. Uh, the measurements were performed in squid and PMS, 5S, and also used the magnetotic imaging to, based on the Faraday effect, to, to see what is, to observe this, the, the sample. Well, 
we have used the same idea, emulating an AC field using a DC field. It means that I apply the field and take a picture and then apply another field and take a picture and so on, make this AC, AC cycle. The frequency of this, this AC cycle was about 0 .05, 0 0.05 uh, hertz, and the exposure time is 0.2 seconds. And the, the field was applied out of plane in the sample. Well, this is the idea what you use to, to measure the, the, the AC susceptibility. So in isothermal condition, we apply this DC field, emulating the AC field, and then increase the temperature and, and uh, make the measurement and again and again for the increase in temperature. That means without cleaning the, the magnetic history, and these are the, 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 the temperatures that we measure for the increasing, also for the decreasing temperature. So now I'll show the AC susceptibility versus temperature curves for this molybdenum silicon uh, plane film. And uh, here is for the increasing temperature, and uh, the, this measurement was also taken by stop and measure at, at, at this temperature, for example, 3K, stop and measure, and then increase the temperature, stop this temperature, and measure again. And um, well, here I'll show uh, uh, the um, here I'll show the increase uh, the uh, uh, movie for the first cycle for four temperatures: 2.7, 5, 6, and 6.5K. And uh, it's in sequence, uh, just removing the background due to the garnet. So it's possible to see that we have a ZFC condition, and then it increases, increasing the temperature, of course, the, the flux front will enter deeper in the sample, as you can see in 6 and 6.5K. And now for the decreasing temperature uh, measurement, we have basically the, uh, the curve is re reversible, as you can see here. And then for the MOI images, the I'll show the same uh, set of temperatures. So it's possible to see that the flux enters uh, in the sample, and then it, uh, the, the penetration depth decreases, and then we'll have a condition which is completely different from this condition, because here you have the flux, the flux is trapped, uh, trapped by the AC cycles uh, for due to the higher temperatures. Well, and uh, here you can see that they are different. However, to treat this data, we have used the idea of the differential magneto-optical, and uh, it was possible to observe the vortex lattice melting based on the uh, subtraction of consecutive images. So, based on this idea, um, I have uh, uh, treated this sample by taking this differential image for the increasing temperature cycle and decreased temperature cycle. But this one, I'll show, uh, I will exhibit this uh, video, this movie backwards in order to, to allow us to compare both uh, measurements. So it's possible to see that they have the same behavior. Uh, for all, all the temperatures, as you can see in this movie. And it means that uh, actually, the, as expected from the AC susceptibility curve, the AC susceptibility is related to the, uh, the, the, the local slope of the magnetization. And here we, are, uh, we have the same behavior as expected in, uh, as we, we can see in this, in this curve. So, Although the magnetic history is different, the differential Im images show uh, a similar behavior. Wow. Now, uh, the measurement was done uh, for an AC field of 2.4 Ersted, and uh, it's possible to see the ma paramagnetic reentrance here due to the flux avalanches, and by uh, just showing the, 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 the set of image taken for 2.7K and the four cycles, you can see that there is the reuse of the channels and of new avalanches are triggered. However, it's uh, used by this, uh, the flux avalanches. This is a case, uh, this four cycle was taken during the increase of the, 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 the temperature. And uh, now, 
it's possible to see that these uh, curves are, are uh, reversible. And then I'll show for the decrease in temperature after the sample was uh, uh, already decreased the temperature from, from 6 to 3K, 3, 3K, 3 Kelvin. So it's possible to see the reuse of these uh, uh, tracks created uh, along the, the region where the avalanche take place. That means below 3.9K. Now I'll compare only the fourth cycle uh, of the, the of this temperature, and it's possible to see that they have a similar behavior. However, now it's not possible to see any uh, um, any reuse of the channels, and uh, that means that. Well, it's possible to see that the, there is a partial reuse. It's a, a, a range between 50 and 100 percent of reuse of these channels. The differential magneto optical imaging does not allow us to, to observe this track reuse. And uh, this behavior extends up to 3.5 K that it was observed by magneto, magneto optical imaging. And uh, now I'll show for the, the measurements for 4.5 Kelvin, and uh, well, for the increase in temperature, I'll show the fourth uh, cycles, and uh, it's possible to see that there is the, the residual flux avalanche triggered before at low temperatures, and uh, uh, well, basically, this, the four cycles are similar, and uh, for decreasing temperature, we have the same, basically the same behavior, and uh, it's possible to see that uh, there is this pulse of flux entering and uh, uh, exiting the sample. And now we will compare the differential images of these uh, four cycles. And uh, we will show that the first cycle for, this, uh, um, uh, for the increase in temperature is a bit different, but only the first cycle. And we can see here some uh, protuberance appearing in the, in the movie. And now all the, 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 the second, the third, and the fourth cycles are really similar. So what we have here, basically for the maximum field, for the first cycle, it's possible to see this protuberance. And for the minimum field, this one. And there is no more flux avalanches in this, the, in the, the sample, as you can see, uh, presents a smooth penetration that are similar increasing and decreasing the temperature. And uh, this behavior is also observed in the sample decorated with the antidotes. Well, now I'll show these uh, images to explain what is happening here. Uh, basically, this is the temperature of 5K, and this is the initial image uh, for this temperature. So it's possible to see the residual flux avalanches and uh, some field that penetrates smoothly in the sample. Well, I'll show a zoom map of this region and I'll color this uh, set of uh, image uh, in order to, to, to be possible to observe what is happening here. Basically, we have a negative uh, flux avalanche here, that means a uh, uh, an avalanche that uh, becomes an uh, anti-vortex, and here we have the vortices, and then this is the same image in order to compare. Now I increase the field from 0 to 2.4 Ersted, and we can see that in this par uh, 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 there is a partial uh, raising of this, this flux avalanche, and then here nothing happens. However, when we can compare this region with this region, when we decrease the field, this avalanche will be also erased by the incoming opposite flux from the, the, the border. So this is the remnant state after the AC cycle. And uh, it's possible to see that this, this flux avalanche is erased, partially erased. And this one is also partially erased. And as it is erased by the opposite flux, it's, it's an uh, annihilation zone. Well, as I told you, this happens only in the first cycle. Here you can see the differential image for the maximum field and the differential image for the 
the minimum field, and it's possible to see the protuberance. However, when the, for the second cycle, the third cycle, the fourth cycle, it's possible to see that there is no, almost no uh, changes in the region where the avalanches were uh, uh, placed. So the flux avalanches are erased by the incoming opposite flux from the borders. Well, now I'm going to show you the, the, the same study for the for the low, uh, for 3.5k for the plain field, and uh, I'll show the zoom up of these uh, flux avalanches, and then it's possible to see here it's a negative flux uh, avalanche. I mean, with uh, anti vortex. Then uh, I took these images at B, C, D, E, and F. Here, C is before exactly before D, and E is exactly before F. It's possible to see here there is the reuse of the channel because positive flux enter um, and uh, cover, I mean, the, all the, the flux avalanche that was there. And then, due to this uh, AC cycle, the root of the, the flux avalanche is erased by the incoming uh, smooth uh, penetration. And then a new avalanche is triggered. Then it's erased again, a new avalanche is triggered, and then erased again. So what we have from the differential image, the reuse is here. Then this is the signal of, uh, of the, uh, the erasing that uh, the, the avalanche is, uh, is being erased. And then a new avalanche is triggered, but it avoids the, the, the other avalanche. That's the same signal here. And what uh, we have here, then it's, clean, it's, it's erased again, and uh, another avalanche is triggered and erased again. So the avalanche avoids overcome avalanche with the same uh, polarity. Well, as my, well, for my uh, last slide, slide with the results, here there is a, a susceptibility curves. The, the component in phase of the AC susceptibility versus temperature for several AC fields for this molybdenum silicon thin film. And uh, by considering the, the, um, the uh, constitutive uh, relation from the magnetism and considering also the relation between the intensity and also the uh, in, uh, induction field, uh, we have taken the average, um, the, uh, the mean grade value from the, the region where the sample is, and then we could calculate the chi prima component. As you can see here from the images, I mean, and uh, as you can see here, we have a good agreement for the uh, AC field of one Orsted, and also a good agreement for the AC field of 2.4 Orsted. Well, as my conclusions, we could visualize the AC susceptibility response by using mag differential magneto-optical, and we could understand why it's independent of the magnetic history, at least for these measurements. Uh, we could see this, uh, what happens with the flux avalanche. Actually, they, are not, they don't melt, but actually they are raised by the incoming or positive flux, and new flux avalanche avoid avalanche with the same uh, polarity. So, uh, these features that we observed for this sample was the same, uh, were also presented by the sample with, an, uh, with the array of antidotes. And we could calculate the in-phase component of the AC susceptibility from the, the magneto-optical image, and the results show that it's in a good agreement with the squid measurements. So, thank you very much for the attention. <laughs>